Good evening and a warm welcome to Empowering You for Victory. Moen and I send our fondest love greetings to every one of you. Today, I want to share for a few minutes on partaking of God's grace that is on your man of God. Partaking of the anointing, the grace of God that's on your man of God. Family, when God calls a man or a woman of God with a specific call to do something, then he anoints that person. He gives him an unction to function. God will never call somebody to do something without giving that person an ability to do it when they obey. So I want to read from Philippians chapter 1 and reading from verse 3 to verse 8. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ even as it is meet for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospels of the gospel you all are partakers of my grace for God is my record how gratefully I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ praise God God for his word. Family, when you sow into your man of God and into the vision and call of the man of God and you're sowing into his life as well and blessing him as well, there are great blessings that come upon you. There's some things that happen Paul, first of all, says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy. Your man of God remembers you. Make no mistake because this is an anointed service. This is a God service. This is a kingdom service. Don't take sowing lightly. Don't take supporting the work of God lightly. When you do it, there's a God intervention. There is a God partnership in your life because uh, God was involved in calling the man of God and giving him a vision. And so you are making a demand for God involvement in your sowing. And your man of God knows it. Number one, your man of God remembers you. Number two, he is grateful. He's making requests with joy for you, for your fellowship in the gospel. That word fellowship is partnership. He's making mention of you in prayers for your partnership with him in the call of God. That word fellowship is partnership, kanonia. And so they, you're partnering. Not only are you sowing your seed, but you're partnering in with your man of God. And then number three, the Apostle Paul says, God will perform the good work that God began in you until the very end. I want you to see the blessings they are in sowing and reaping, but also the additional blessings. Your man of God remembers you. Your man of God prays because you're partnering with him. Number three, your man of God is praying that God will perform, will complete the good work that he began in you till the very end. 
Then I want to read verse 7 and look at number 4. He says, Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, no sower is left out, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are partakers of my grace. So number four, your man of God has got the sower in his heart. That's very powerful because the transaction is a heart transaction. And your heart must be right with your man of God. Your man of God's heart must be right with you. But God will do the transaction. God will give growth to the seed and the harvest. He's the Lord of the harvest, but he works with the heart. Your man of God has got a sower in the sowers in his heart. Your man of God has got you in his life's experience. Every man of God has got his own experiences. Paul, when he wrote this epistle to the church at Philippi, he was in prison. He says, I have you in my bonds. It means he was enchained in prison for preaching the gospel, for the call of God in his life. There is much persecution that a man goes, a man of God goes through that has the call of God in his life. I've never met a man of God who was faithful over a period of time to God that didn't suffer persecution. Because there is the kingdom of darkness coming up against to try to take him out. Because if you can take the leader out, you'll scatter the flock. If you smart the shepherd, you'll scatter the flock. And so your man of God is going through big stuff. He may not share it with you because he's trusting God. And he may share it also may or may not with the intercessors that are close to him. However, the man of God, Paul is saying, I also have you in my persecution. I have you in my bonds. I have you in my life's experience. And the Bible is very clear that when somebody is persecuted for righteousness, then the glory of God rests upon him. And when your man of God is being persecuted for righteousness sake, then the glory of God that's resting on him, that's giving him the ability to still persevere, will come upon you. So that is why it's so important for you not to get discouraged with the stuff that a man of God goes through because he's got you in his bonds he's got you in his life's experience your man of god has also got you in the defense of the gospel when god calls a man of god to preach a certain truth now the bible has got the full gospel in it but no one man has got a specific call to preach to be a specialist in everything now, I know what God has called me. He's called me to teach and preach faith, prosperity, and victorious living. Other people are called to preach differently, but we all preach the full gospel of Christ. But there's a specialist anointing in a particular area. And for me, I know that this particular area is the area of faith and finances. And so when I teach the word of God and I preach the word of God, I'm defending the gospel. And then number eight, you are partakers of my grace. You are partakers, my grace, your man of God's grace, anointing, revelation is from God. It's God's grace, but it's come upon the man of God and you partake of that same grace that's upon the man of God for your family life, for your business life, for your career, that God's word will work powerfully in your life. And so don't forget now, while you sow your seed, you're sowing it through a man of God, into a man of God for the vision of God, 
for his own well-being. Number one, the man of God will remember you. The man of God will pray for your partnership. The God will perform the good work till the very end. Your man of God has you in his heart. Your man of God has you in his life's experience. The glory of God is coming upon you. Your man of God has you in the defense of the gospel. Your man of God has you in the confirmation of the gospel. And you partake of the man of God's grace. Plus a hundredfold harvest return to your seed. That means there is a tremendous grace that is released upon your life when your man of God gives you a project and you sow into it. God richly, richly bless you, family. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the priceless gift of sowing and reaping. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that your people will understand this and they will experience this grace super abounding towards them as they reap a hundredfold harvest return and more in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. No seed that they've ever sown has stopped producing, is still producing. And will continue to produce until Jesus Christ comes. I bless your people now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye and God richly bless your family. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye. is in you, the kingdom is in you, say amen, and in the kingdom is everything you have need of until Jesus comes. So you came loaded. You don't need to beg anybody for anything. You just bring it forth. When God is with you, you are higher than anybody. When God promotes you, take your place. Do not be apologetic. Take your space that God has given unto you because God has qualified you. The one building your faith is the one keeping you walking in victory in your marriage, in your finances, in your home, in your relationships. So the one building your faith is the one keeping you pleasing God. has placed the wealth here. He said in his word in the book of Haggai that the silver is his, the gold is his, the wealth is his. And God wants you and I by the Spirit of God to milk out the wealth that he's placed in this world. We are a pioneering people. We are a breakthrough people. We are a people of conviction. We are a people of passion. We are a people of zeal. You've been designed to multiply. You've been designed to increase. You've been designed to rule. You've been designed to be the son of God. You've been designed to own your world, control your world, dominate your world. You've been designed. That's your design.